Hello and welcome back to Timeless River. Today I'm going to finish the build exercise for this toy box. But before I do, I want to let you know that this will be my only video this week because it's the Thanksgiving holiday here in the United States and I'll be spending the time with my family. So my next video will air a week from today, next Monday. Now before I build the final area in my toy box, which is going to go in this empty area over here, and that's going to be the construction site. I want to show you what I've done since our last video. I took the opportunity to place the remaining plant clusters around the toy box. And so let me show you those, and I'm going to do this as quickly as I can. All of these pieces are the fantasy terrain piece, which have been styled to use the New Holland Terrain 3. All right, and feel free to pause this video along the way, but uh, I added a bunch of these little trees around just to fill in some empty space, and the placement of these doesn't really have to be too exact. Uh, I added two here in the yard. You can kind of look at the texture on the ground to get an idea of where to place these, but um, I just put a few in to fill in the empty area. because there is a lot of empty area in here. And then I added a few up here on this mesa. A couple of them down over here, and you don't need too many. You just need a little something in here. And I'm showing you these a little faster than I normally would, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on these. Uh, we put those in a uh, previous video. Not last time, but in a previous one. And we can take all of these out, by the way. These were just in here from an earlier episode, just to show the pieces I was using. Okay, so those are in there, and this, of course, is cro across from the wharf. And then up on the mesa over here, you can see I have just a smattering of trees. Not too many. I did make sure I put these very close to where the trees are in the future. And of course, they're much smaller here, which actually works to our advantage. because it makes it look like they're younger. <laughs> and there you go. Oh, and a few others down over here. Mainly to kind of direct the player from this gate around to that gate. And I put a few in here just to fill in that empty space. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is we're going to pick this little corner of this hill up and put it down. I'm going to bring this over here. We're going to put a little hill in right about here like that. Okay, that should be enough room. just so we're not filling the area in completely with trees. I think that just helps that a lot. Okay, so that's everything I've done so far. And now we're gonna move on to the construction site. And um, here's some footage of that location from Kingdom Hearts 2. Like the burning building, it was accessed through a floating doorway, so I really have no idea where this location is in relation to the other areas in the game. The construction site consists of the framework for a huge building made with girders and wooden planks. This screenshot shows that the building grounds are surrounded by a wooden fence, and you can see some building material laying around on the ground and on various levels. 
The site is also surrounded by a lot of large buildings, but because of the size of this toy box being kind of small and the memory constraints, I'm going to leave those buildings out because they're not really necessary. So as we come back in, the pieces that we're going to need, we're going to need the picket fence out of the decorations drawer. And I'm going to use that for the fence around the site. And we also need some pieces out of building sets group two. We have this piece and the one next to it, which will come in handy. And then we also have these pipes and some other pieces located near that. That's also in building sets group two, as you'll see when we begin uh, filling that area in. So we'll start with this piece and let me pull up my screen grabs here just to make sure we get this in the right places here. Hang on just a moment. All right. So I'm going to begin by placing this like you see right there. And we're going to place these uh, three of those down side by side. And uh, then we're going to do another three. And let me just make sure, yeah, one more. And then we'll put the open building frame over here. So we don't want this to look too finished. And then for the second level, We're going to leave an open frame there. And then, sorry, trying to make sure I had the right screen grab here. And then for the final level, we're going to do that. Okay, so there is our building under construction. And unfortunately, the brown on the wood there kind of goes with the rest of the wood that we're using over there. And it's not too noticeable when you're down below on the ground. So that's good. Okay. Next up, it'd be nice to have a crane over here. So let's reuse this. And we'll put another one of these over here. And again, the exact placement of this doesn't really matter. But I know some of you are kind of sticklers for it. Because you like to recreate exactly what I've got in my toy box. So, uh, we're going to place this. Let's see, this is a little bit different than what I had with mine. But we'll place this about right there. Okay. And then we'll add some building material around the base. And this one, as I said earlier, is also in Building Sets Group 2. We'll bring this over here. And we can place a few of these around. So we'll put one up here next to the, the wood there. We can place another one. Like that. And, um, <laughs> of course, I didn't place these in a really useful spot. Here we go. My screen grabs were not as organized as I thought they were. We have this construction wheelbarrow, which I thought would be kind of nice. So we'll put one of these out over here. Maybe another one about like that. We also have these piles of bricks, so this is kind of handy. And they're a little bit reddish, but amazingly they fit in pretty well with this. With the black and white sky that's in here, they almost look black and white, so <laughs> I like that. And we'll place another 
pile of these over here. They were just making it look like a messy construction site because they're really busy building. All right, I like that. And now we'll run the picket fence around it. So I'll use this piece for the corner and this along the perimeter. We'll run this all the way down. It's not quite as tall as the one that's in the uh, screenshot that I showed, but in the gameplay toys drawer there is a wooden fence that you could use. It is brown. I figured I want to keep this black and white as much as possible. So since I have the option of using white versus brown, I'm going to use white. Plus the brown one is destructible. I'd kind of really rather not do that. All right, so there is our construction site. And it looks like a construction site. Now in the game, the players are climbing around on top of this thing and battling Heartless up there. So I thought it'd be really nice to have a way to get up there and um, and do some things on, on the construction site, which if you saw in the playthrough video is what we did. So up under the platforming toys, we're going to put a few ledge hang mazes in here. And this is going to allow us to have a little bit of fun climbing around on top of this thing. So I like that. We'll make the player do a little jump. And then we'll fill in the rest of this with this spacing. With the barrier piece that they can't actually climb on. Because it looks a little weird if you just leave the ledge hang pieces and you don't fill in the area around it. And to me that looks a little bit better. Alright, so there is our first little maze. It's not too difficult. Now since we're on this side of the building, let's go ahead and fit this one in. And the idea here was is they're going to have to jump from this ledge over to get onto the thing. And so I thought that would be kind of a fun little challenge. It's not just a simple climb up and grab it. <laughs> it's uh, a little bit uh, trickier than that. All right, then we have this... Uh, there's an elevator one here somewhere. Vertical sliding, yeah. And um, I want to go up like that. Yeah, let's just watch that for a second and make sure that only goes down. Yeah. All right, so then we'll put one of these up top and we'll fill in the rest of the area. Like that. There you go. So there's that ledge hang maze. And then we'll put another one down over here. And this one's a little tricky because the player is going to be on this level, but they're going to have to get on the outside of this thing to climb up. And so that's why we're going to use this rotating double ledge hang to do that. And um, let me get my screen grab for that here. <laughs> I thought I had a picture of that. Yep, there we go. All right, so this one is going to sit out like this and it rotates as you see we'll place this one out over here we're gonna have to jump to get to this one and then 
go up like that. And then we'll fill in the rest. Oops. Actually, I'm thinking that piece just for consistency. Let's move that up. Put the small one in here. There we go. So now they have a way to get from this side onto the outside and then work their way up to get up to the top and then from here they can work their way up to get up there. All right. And um, that's the construction site. I'm almost done, but uh, I need to place a few final pieces first. So up here, we want to have the gate that leads to Maleficent's castle, the one that she's using to attack this world with. And for that, we're going to use the Dunbrock stone gate. I think that's our best bet for this. And let me make sure I get the placement of this exactly where I want it. Okay, so we're going to place this back here about like that. I think we'll put the greenery on the back side because I want this to look as black as black and white as possible. All right, next up we have Merlin's Castle. And by the way, another piece you can use in the black and white black and white world is this Sleepy Hollow Bridge. That fits perfectly in here, also with the spooky theme. So, didn't have an occasion to use that this time, but um, that's all right. I think this sits in here like that. Hang on just a moment. I need to double check that. That's going to sit there like that. And, uh, yep. Just double checking the bounding box there. And now that we have Merlin's castle in there, we can move our starting pad up. The player enters the world of Timeless River in my toy box through a portal that Merlin opens next to his tower. So I thought it'd be really nice to have the player actually start right here. And then that way they can see just how much this world has changed since they left it <laughs> in, from the future. Because out over that way, when they stepped through the portal, was the castle. And now you come out of the portal and there's no castle. <laughs> it's uh, empty farmland and a town in the distance. And it would be helpful to be able to get around this toy box. So we're going to drop a uh, couple of mounts. And coincidentally, we have the Toy Story Zebra, which is black and white. <laughs> so I thought that would be a perfect fit here for this. And uh, let me make sure I've got my screen grab here. Not that the placement of these guys probably really matters, but um, I want them right below where the player comes off the ledge up there. So we'll place one say about uh, here another one right over here so in case there's two players and you can see from that memory meter oops on the uh, right that we've still got plenty of memory for the logic and the enemies and all of that in this toy box 
And with that, the build exercise for this toy box is done. Next time, we'll begin working on the mission logic. Until then, I want to thank you for watching and wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. We definitely have much to be thankful for, and I'm thankful for all of you, and especially for my followers and subscribers and my regular viewers. You guys are the best. Have a great week.